It's time for Over There with Morella Rostroffer. Morella is our European correspondent. She joins us weekly. She is over there in guessing Switzerland. And she will tell us in a minute uh, how, how I did with this week's guest. Hi, Morella. How are you? Hi, very well. Thank you. Hello from Switzerland. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, we uh, we are going to talk today about this uh, major heat wave that uh, is uh, um, uh, basically uh, hitting uh, Europe in its all and including uh, Switzerland. It's um, it's it's worth uh, being our topic today because. This uh, obviously, these very unusual uh, temperatures are again raising a lot of questions concerning uh, the climate changes, um, and that goes for uh, people who believe in those changes or people who don't believe in those changes. But either ways, um, that's definitely a phenomenon that. Uh, also increases these kind of uh, conversations and discussions and um, sometimes fights about uh, about the future uh, regarding the um, uh, the climate um, so um, yeah in a very unusual way but not a unique way yet um, we are having very high temperatures and what is a little bit unusual is that it's supposed to be the entire week. So it's not as we used to have maybe one or two days a little bit warmer. It's uh, this entire week with a peak probably around uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, what kind of temperatures are we talking about? Um, it's going to uh, hit 40 degrees Celsius, which is 104 grade Fahrenheit. Uh, in part of Spain, it could go up to even 107.6 Fahrenheit. So it's uh, it's very warm, it's very hot. And the big difference that maybe is... Um, more surprising for for Americans that don't travel too often of, over here is the fact that we do not have here um, so many air conditioning units privately. It's uh, in most countries, including Switzerland, it's even forbidden to have any uh, AC um, installed. Uh, in private houses, so you will uh, obviously find that in hotels, uh, big uh, uh, shopping malls or um, offices, uh, etc. But um, more, most, mostly um, in uh, public uh, places, and very, very rarely in uh, in private uh, houses. Um, so that means, of course, that when it becomes that warm, for many people, there are not many places where to find relief. And I'm talking particularly about older people or, um, or children. Um, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a, a heat wave that um, has been um, prepared for though um, I'll take as an example uh, Paris where uh, some cool rooms have been um, prepared in uh, in public buildings um, there are also some extra drinking fountains um, swimming pools are uh, staying open longer uh, in in the evening uh, for people to be able to uh, cool off a little bit. Um, a lot also of warnings are being released um, basically by uh, giving some advice of what to do or not to do um, and also telling people that with serious symptoms of dizziness, headache, uh, um, or or fainting even uh, to uh, rather consult a doctor to make sure that it doesn't go further than that. 
Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a situation that is a little bit unusual for us over here. Um, schools uh, exams uh, t uh, in some parts have been uh, postponed. Um, in Geneva, for example, at this time of the year, you have some uh, you have the the uh, kids from primary school um, uh, having uh, like a day out with festivities, etc., um, in parks uh, to just uh, you know uh, begin the summer holiday. All of this has been apparently. Um, cancelled in order for the children not to suffer uh, walking under the sun. So the discussions, of course, that uh, are raising from that are the climate changes, because um, while we are having this uh, hot temperature this week, last week we had terrible storms. Um, in Switzerland and also, I believe, in Germany, where, um, for example, in Switzerland, certain villages um, were absolutely flooded. And, uh, houses had a meter high um, water. People had to go on their, uh, jump on their furniture in order to, uh, to, to, to wait uh, for, for help. Um, all of this um, is making... Uh, many people, even skeptical people, a little bit nervous because they are touched in what's most precious to them and it's basically their their life, their house, their belongings, um, their cars uh, and, and, and potentially their lives as I believe a, a woman died during that storm. Um, so this increases a lot uh, the, the discussions about climate changes. Um, it makes certain uh, topics like, for example, in Sweden, what's called now, you probably heard of it, Jill, uh, fly, um, fly shaming. Um, and it's, uh, it's basically a movement that um, is gaining in, uh, in popularity. Uh, that encourage to take the train for uh, short um, distances in Europe, or even not that short, uh, frankly speaking, but taking the train instead of taking the plane. This is now called fly shaming because there is this effort that some appreciate and other appreciate less of shaming people who uh, take um, who fly too often. Um, I believe there is even one movement on social media that shame uh, celebrities who are um, flying too much or are showing too much how much they are flying. Uh, but um, in any case, there is something that is a little bit different as a simple recommendation of what we had uh, in the past when facing other kind of problems. Um, this time, it's very much linked to a moral compass and uh, a group of people not only... Um, asking for um, some effort or recommending some uh, behaviors in, instead of uh, some habits, instead of uh, older habits. But there is also the sense of shaming, which, is, which goes definitely uh, a little bit further. And I think this is, this is um, the most interesting point um, coming to this kind of uh, action. Uh, it's the fact that there is definitely also a form of aggression uh, linked to it. Um, that being said, it's also because there is increasingly this feeling that uh, climate is bringing a lot of changes, um, water everywhere in the world is raising. That means that many people in the future will have to migrate because they won't have any choice. Um, that also means that these kind of changes are uh, going to um, 
alter the life mostly of people without means because people with means will find the way to go and stay there where there is still enough drinkable water, which is also the next problem, and where there is um, enough uh, food, uh, because in other parts, as we know, um, it's difficult to make anything grow when there is uh, almost no rain or no rain at all, as this is the case right now in some parts of India. Um, so I think that uh, all of those um, uh, excessive uh, uh, climate um, phenomena are also bringing a sort of um, two fronts. First of all, obviously, the one who believe in climate changes, the one who don't believe in climate changes. But in both um, groups, um, I think certain people are done with um, with just talking and definitely want to be uh, to see big changes. Um, what we can see also in uh, in Europe and in Switzerland uh, lately is that students are being a major part of those movements. Obviously, uh, that is um, mainly their future, so one can understand um, why the reason uh, they are so adamant about it. They are writing letters to politicians to ask them to uh, to speak less and act more. Uh, certain schools, for example, for example, are also um, cancelling um, school trips with airplanes and uh, decided that while it might take longer, it is worth it for um, the CO2 emissions to take the train. And um, many schools, as well as universities, are also having days um, in, um, in, uh, in the cafeterias where they don't have meat anymore. The, those are uh, meat-free uh, days. Uh, so one can see that um, many actions are taking place at many levels. Obviously, some are, can seem very insignificant, but, you know, it's also uh, somehow a, a step at a time. Um, plastic bags um, are going to be completely banned. I forgot that, but this is actually an extremely important um, part also of new regulation in, the, in, 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 in Europe. Not not only in Switzerland, but uh, but in Europe. Um, so um, I believe that um, climate changes are taken seriously, even more in times like this week, where um, suddenly we are feeling like um, in south of France or south of Spain, they were twenty years ago. Uh, one would have this feeling only in the south of Europe. And now it's uh, definitely shifting also to uh, the northern part. And it does feel um, a little bit um, unusual. Um, one can also add that when I say northern Europe, it also touches uh, countries like Sweden or Denmark, uh, not as heavily because they are very north, but they are still going to hit uh, 30 degrees, uh, 35 degrees. This is, um, this is not as much as in Central Europe, but this is also highly unusual for them. Um, so I think uh, many things are changing and uh, climate changes uh, are happening if we want it or not. At what speed? It's actually difficult to say because informations are gigantically different depending on uh, what kind of report or what kind of paper one reads. Uh, but the fact is and remains that um, that, that the weather is, uh, is, is being very surprising um, as of lately. Thank you very much, Mirella Rostrofer. Over there. My pleasure. <laughs>